And welcome back. This year, doctors will prescribe sleeping aids to some 60 million Americans, and you may be one of them. But increasingly, the drug that is supposed to lull you to sleep is showing up in the systems of drivers who have gotten behind the wheel with disastrous consequences. And often, the drivers have no memory of what they've done. Tonight, Channel 3 Senior, Channel 3 senior Health Correspondent Monica Robbins shows us firsthand the dangerous mix of medicine and machinery. Ambien and its generic form Zolpidem are among the most commonly prescribed sleeping aids. The drug can stay in your system up to 12 hours. Most side effects are minor, but a less common side effect known as complex sleep-related behaviors are cause for concern. That's the sleep driving, the eating in sleep without awareness, the sleep walking. I remember getting on the highway and then I have no memory. Carrie Kennedy took Ambien and sideswiped a truck. It was also in the system of her cousin, former Congressman Patrick Kennedy, when he crashed into a concrete barrier in 06. In Texas, a woman mixed Ambien and alcohol and doesn't remember running over two young girls and their mother. Last May, a man in southern Illinois took four and then he drove into a highway construction crew, killing one and injuring three others. It's actually just as bad as drinking and driving. Researchers at Ohio University use a driving simulator to study and help improve road safety. Dr. Deborah McAvoy and her team created a program to test the driving skills of someone under the influence of Ambien. That someone was me. First, I went through a few trials to get used to the Ford Focus. Cameras track my eye movement and the computer records my speed and how well I stay in my lane. That's the end of the first one. I easily pass the field sobriety test. Now I'm ready to take my pill. The time is 11.28 in the morning and I'm taking approximately five milligrams. The drug's directions are clear. Go to bed for at least seven to eight hours. Do not drive until fully awake. Ambien is designed to act quickly and it does. Five minutes and I'm starting to feel dizzy. I'm gonna lay down for about 10 minutes and we'll see what happens. At 11.45, I'm up, but definitely unsteady. I'm dizzy. Once in the car, I think I'm driving pretty well, but not as well as before. Oops, sorry. We repeat the same process one hour after taking the Ambien. I'm clearly disoriented. Do it again. Back in the car, I don't realize I'm speeding until the simulator tells me, not once. Slow down. But twice. Slow down. Two and a half hours in, the Ambien is now at its peak in my system. I should probably do that again. Can you imagine actually having to drive a car right now? No. No. I mean, I was glad the wall was there. I'm yawning and fighting sleep. Impatient, I swerve around one stop car, narrowly missing it. The first part of my final test is over. I don't think I hit anything. I definitely was fighting to keep my eyes open. I was doing 80 and a 30. The two biggest things I noticed were speed variance and uh, the ability for her to stay in her lane. As the day progressed, we saw those skills started to um, deteriorate. Drowsy drivers have trouble perceiving how quickly they're coming up on another vehicle. And this is a leading cause of crashes. Sobering news for me, but I wasn't done. Three hours after taking an Ambien, a winter driving scenario. Listen to what Nick tells me right before I start. The speed limit here is 55. I begin driving, but within 30 seconds. Uh, you all right? I've lost control and slammed at high speed into a concrete barrier. Is my car really damaged that I can't take off? Yeah, you're done. I'm done? Remember, Nick told me the speed limit before I started. One minute later, I have no memory of our conversation. I don't remember seeing a speed limit. This is a very serious crash. You went into the concrete barrier. Oh, so you like... You are not probably walking away from this crash. So EMS is on the way? They're on the way. That's bad. <laughs> wow. That's sobering, isn't it? Monica Robbins, Channel 3 News. Wow, very dramatic demonstration. Now, studies are being done to better understand how the brain functions when under the influence of prescription sleeping medication. And if you do take sleeping medication, it's important to follow the guidelines and understand the warnings. And certainly, it might not hurt to give your keys to someone else so that you can't drive. 
And Monica tells us when she was actually reviewing the video for this story, she did not even remember most of her final two driving tests.